Um, now I want to bring up uh, Representative-elect David Morales, who is one of those new political minds in Rhode Island that we're thankful for. For over 10 months now, our communities have been suffering from a global pandemic alongside high levels of economic insecurity. Of course you all know that because we have been the ones living through it. So now, more than ever, we need a state government that reflects our needs. And that starts and begins with a state budget that recognizes these needs. Because let's remember, there is a reason why people have always lacked health care, affordable housing options, and decent quality public education. These are by design. They are the results of careless policy and budgetary decisions that ignore the needs of working people and communities of color. The same people who are then forced to suffer the consequences of these divestments. So while it is easy for the governor and other political leaders to reference our state's deficit as an excuse to cut Medicaid, city aid, social services, and programs, we have to remind them that solutions exist. An austerity budget is not the answer. Instead, we can finally, finally begin working towards a fair tax code where the wealthiest Rhode Islanders pay their basic fair share. While it is not well known, in 2006, the state of Rhode Island cut taxes for the wealthiest residents, allowing them to go from paying a 10% income tax rate to a 6% income tax rate. Yeah. The same one which most of you are paying. And that is put a regressive tax code that is putting the burden on working people. And since then, we have had several different political leaders in power, none of whom ever saw that an unfair tax code was an issue worth fixing. Despite the fact that it has disrupted the economic revenue of cities, towns, and our state in general over the last 15 years. Because think about it. If you are cutting taxes for rich people and have no system in place to make up for the incoming gaps in revenue, then it will be social services that working people depend on that are going to be left to suffer. It is going to be working people that have to suffer from these divestments and the greed of the wealthy individuals and corporations that help negotiate these tax cuts. So this is the reason why our government has continued to cut Medicaid from the state budget for nearly a decade. And, and it is also why our urban school districts continue to struggle. There's a reason why the buildings are deteriorating each and every single year. Yes. While it should not have taken a global pandemic and economic distress for the idea of taxing the wealthy to finally, finally get some attention from the media and political leaders, it is now time that we make this a reality. Yes. No longer will we allow for business as usual to continue. No longer will we tolerate austerity budgets, especially now, where thousands of people are suffering each and every single day to, due to the lack of financial relief from the state. A budget is a moral document, and we are demanding that our state budget invest towards the needs of working people, our elderly, and communities of color. We deserve to be prioritized regardless of what any technocrat in the governor's office says. Yes. 
solutions exist, and that is why there is no excuse for an austerity budget now or ever. Hey, gracias, hermano. That was really amazing.